Hi there, in this video I'm going to show you how to create a density map based around a hexagonal grid, a lot like the one you can see on my screen here, using tools that we have available in QGIS. So density grids are really useful for mapping a whole range of things, whether that's crime rates, whether it's frequency of species observations, or anything else for which we have a number of points representing um, each of our observations. So in order to create this density map, we're going to need two pieces of information. Firstly, is a polygon layer showing the outline of the area that we're interested in, in which we need to create our hexagonal grid. Um, the second is a point layer containing the observations that we're going to use to calculate the frequencies. So in my case, I've simply generated a layer of random points um, within the outline of the, the UK. So once we've got these two pieces of data, um, there's one particular tool or plugin that we're going to use to help us with our calculations, and that's the MMQGIS plugin. So if we head up to plugins, manage and install plugins, and search for MMQGIS, and you should see the MMQGIS plugin um, available. So I've installed it already, but if you haven't got it, just click the install button down here in the bottom right, and it should just take a few seconds to install, and you will then see the MMQJS menu appear up here on your toolbar. So MMQJS actually gives us a whole bunch of useful tools for doing various different things, including things like geocoding um, addresses. But the tool that we're going to use is under Create and the Create Grid Layer option. Now QJS does have a built-in option under its vector tools to create grids. The advantage of the MMQJS uh, plugin is that it gives us the option to create a hexagonal grid, which is exactly what we want. So I'm going to change my shape type to hexagons, change my extent to a particular layer, uh, make sure my layer is my UK outline. Um, now we need to pick the size of the grid. I'm going with a roughly 10 kilometer grid. Now because the width and height of hexagons aren't even, you'll notice that the X and Y spacing will always be slightly different. So don't worry about that. That's just the way it has to be. Um, and obviously you'll need to play around with the grid spacing until you find one that works for the particular area that you're, you're looking at. So feel free to kind of experiment with the, um, the X and Y spacing until you find something that looks about right. Obviously make sure you know where it's being saved to. So I'm gonna put it in my grids folder and call it 10K grid. And you can save as various different data types. I'm going with shapefile for now. Click OK, and it should only take a few seconds, and you'll see this hexagonal grid appear. Now, what you'll notice is this covers the entire layer extent. It's not just within the polygon areas that we're looking at. So the next thing we're going to need to do is select the hexagons that are only located actually within our polygons. And to do that, we're going to come up here to vector, research tools, and select by location. And in this case, we want to select features from our 10 kilometer grid. Um, there's various options we have from this. So um, if we want to, we can only pick ones that are entirely within our polygon area. I'm gonna go with the option for intersect. So anything that kind of overlaps with the edge of my polygons will get selected. Um, and that'll be useful because I have some very small islands which actually won't cover an entire polygon. Um, but I still want to select that, the hexagon that, that covers those or intersects with those islands. Um, and we're going to create a new selection from this. So 10k grid, um, comparing to features from my outline layer. So make sure you've selected the layer here that has your polygon outlines and create a new selection. And then click run. Now this can take a little while, so depending on the number of points and features you've got. So please be patient. Um, until it appears. Okay, and we can see that I now have a selection that roughly covers the outline of the UK. So I'm now going to save these particular hexagons into a separate shape file. So right click on my layer, go export, save selected features as, and then call this 10k select. Click save. And OK. 
And there we go, I can now turn off my original grid and I now have a layer that just includes the polygons that cover my UK outline. So now we've got those, what we need to do is to actually calculate the number of points that fall within each of those polygons. And again, we're going to do this using built-in QGIS tools under the vector menu. And analysis tools and count points in polygon. So in this case, our polygon is going to be our newly created layer from the selection, which I've called 10K Select. My points layer is my random points. Um, and if we want, we can have weightings. Um, so we've got some information on the right hand side here that tells us exactly what these do. So we can weight each point. Um, but I'm just going to simply count the number of points that I have. I don't have any classes. All of my points are, are the same. And I'm going to call my count field count. And I'm going to save this to a new shape file and call this one 10k count. Okay, now I'm going to have it automatically open once it's run the algorithm. So I'm going to hit run. And again, depending on the number of points and features you've got, this can take a while. So you will need to be patient. Okay, and there we go. So I now have a new layer. And if I open the attributes table, we now have a count, the number of points within each of those hexagons um, included as an attribute. And that's pretty much everything we need to do. So now we've got to this stage, I'm just gonna turn off the layers underneath, go into properties, and all we need to do is change our symbology style from single symbol to graduated, choose the count as our column, and pick the color ramp that we want to, to use. Um, so we go with a red to gray color ramp, um, and I'm going to invert this so that gray is for the low values, red is for the high values, and click apply. And there we go, we have our density map based on a hexagonal grid. Um, obviously, as I said, mine's based on random points, so there's no real patterns within there. But with your data, you may well then be able to start picking up any particular hot spots and cold spots within your data. And most importantly of all, it looks pretty cool ready to export, put into any reports, presentations or whatever else you're trying to produce with the data. So I hope you found that useful. Um, please remember to like and subscribe and check back soon for more videos. Thanks.